What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add some flaring grunge post effects over your lens in order to add some character or a little bit of an artistic touch to your live action shots or CG renders. This technique can help ground your CG into the live action world and is a pretty simple effect to do and customize once you know a few quick shortcuts. So this shot here is a quick animation that I've used this effect on, and I'm just playing this back in After Effects right now, but we'll be doing all of our compositing inside of Blender. But I just wanted to kind of just explain what we're doing here. In the last video, I showed you how to create this kind of volumetric spotlight here. And in this video, you can see that in the composite, you'll notice that as the uh, spotlight gets closer to the camera and starts creating some more bright spots around our lens, we're getting some kind of interesting uh, flaring here, specifically right around this moment right here. So as you can see, when the spotlight creates a really bright spot around our image, that bright spot is actually going to drive this kind of lens dirt grunge effect. You can kind of see it here on the uh, bottom right of our image as well, since I'm using the entire render to drive the lens dirt effect. This bright spot where the clouds are is also driving the amount of lens dirt and grunge over the image as well. So this is just a nice way you can add a little bit of character to your shot. And I'm going to be showing you the concept behind this as well so you can control how much of the uh, actual effect you want to see because you know I tried to uh, go pretty heavy with the effect for the sake of this tutorial but of course you can dial this back in order to get different styles or more subtle results but uh, anyways guys let's get started here we are inside a blender this is going to be the scene we're going to be working with here and as you probably know if you watch the last few tutorials on our channel all we have in this scene here is a few city builder 3d add-on for blender assets here I just use our sci-fi procedural blocks here and then I have our spotlight which I showed you how to create in the last video which is going to be the brightest part of our image and likely going to be driving our lens grunge effect and uh, yeah that's pretty much it I have some rain here added as well but uh, that's not really gonna be part of the tutorial um, but yeah this is going to be our initial setup here but you can apply this technique to pretty much any 3d render assuming that you have a bright spot in your final output that you can isolate and use to drive this lens grunge effect in the composite so um, this is just our scene set up here in the compositing tab. This is going to be our final composite here. I'm not going to be covering this aspect. The lens grunge setup is just all of these nodes right here. So essentially what we're going to do is take our final output here. Go ahead and add an output viewer node here so we can take a look at it. So as you can see here, this is going to be our starting point and we're going to use this image output to drive that lens grunge. So that is what all of this uh, node setup here is and then that's going to form our final composite. So I'll go ahead and get started here and delete all of our setup really quick. So what you'll need to start with me in this tutorial is just your composited image before we add the lens grunge. Also, you will need a very simple dust lens flare image. So I've just uh, looked up dust lens flare image in Google here and you can choose, you know, from whichever one you want. Obviously, depending on which one you use, you may have to uh, license that image or, uh, you know, find one that's royalty free. But uh, any of these images should be fine to use as a dust overlay effect. All right, so an easy way to do this would just be to overlay our dirt lens image on top of our final composite here. So what I can do is just press shift A. I'll add an input image then I'll open up our dirty lens image so I have a variety to choose from here I'm going to use just this JPEG so I'll go ahead and open this and all this image is is just this uh, dirty lens image so one way we could do this without using the light from the image to drive the effect is uh, just by you know pressing shift a here adding a mix node and just kind of overlaying our dirt on top of our image we control this mix node here you can see that we're already getting some kind of lens grunge type effect and this is probably the simplest way you can kind of dirty up your image you could change the blend mode here I like to use screen because it doesn't affect affect the darkness of our initial composite and you can turn this all the way up to one and get some kind of grungy effects here but we want to go a step further and use the bright spots of our render here to drive where the dirt on the lens is shown so to do that what we can do we'll go ahead and keep our screen node here and we'll run the alpha over node to a uh, converter color ramp run this here and I'm going to uh, go ahead and add another viewer output here 
And what we want to do is we want to isolate the bright spots of our image where we want the grunge to bleed through. So I'm gonna bring over our white level here quite a bit. Let's see what this does for us. That's looking a little bit nicer here. So essentially the white spots of our image are going to be where the grunge is showing through. All right, so this is looking a little bit nicer here. We're definitely isolating the white parts of the image a bit more, which is what we're going for. Now what I want to do is kind of blend our white parts of the image into the black areas a bit more. So to do that, I wanna add a kind of a glowing effect. So we'll use a glare node. So I'll go ahead and press shift A. I'll add a filter glare node, add this right here. And I'm gonna use the fog glow effect. And I also wanna bring down the quality to low. That's gonna give us the uh, most flaring. So I think I need to bring the threshold down quite a bit. So maybe 0.3. And you can see here that we're getting some flaring over the white parts of our image. So this threshold value just controls how bright a pixel has to be before it starts glowing. So the lower you bring this, essentially the more the image is going to glow. And I'm also gonna bring up the size to nine. And now what I'm going to do is duplicate this glare node a few times. So I'll press Shift D, duplicate it here. And I'm gonna duplicate it quite a bit because uh, I know what I did before. But again, conceptually, just uh, try to get the white spots of the image to uh, be where you want that grunge to be. So all of this white here will be kind of bleeding through. Another cool thing we could do is add one more glare node. I'll go ahead and duplicate this one one more time and I'll change it to a streaks and I'll bring down the streaks to maybe just one. You'll see here in a second, we're just gonna get kind of a horizontal streak here, kind of a grimy type effect. So again, up to your discretion there, but uh, yeah, I think this is gonna give a nice kind of grimy look like the lens has been smeared or something. Finally, the last thing we're going to do for this mat here is uh, add just a little blur to it. So I'll go to filter, blur, but yeah, just give a little bit of blur to it, blend it into our shot fairly effectively here. Let's crank this up to maybe eight. And yeah, I think this will be a nice mat to drive our lens grunge effect. All right, so I'll select all of our nodes here just to create some space for us. And now I'll uh, get rid of our viewer node here. And now we need to connect our mat data to our lens data to tell Blender where we want the grunge to shine through. So to do that, what I'll do is I'll press shift A. We'll add a color mix node here, add this right after our grunge texture. And I'm going to switch this blend mode to multiply. And now I'm going to connect our black and white mat data and plug it into the top node of our multiply node. And now, as you can see here, we're using that data combined with our grungy lens image through a multiply node to drive that dirty lens effect. And there are a few other things we can do here. For example, perhaps our grunge is a little bit too sharp for our liking. So I'll go to our dirty lens flare image here. I'll go ahead and press shift A. I'll add a filter blur, add this here, make it a bokeh blur, just boost it up a little bit on the X and Y axis maybe quite a bit here, maybe uh, eight. As you can see, just taking the edge off of our sharpness here. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and press Shift A, add a scale node here to make sure that our dirty lens image is the same size as our render. So that'll prevent any uh, issues if the size of it is not lining up correctly. And as you can see here, a little bit changed there, but uh, I actually like this effect a little bit better. I think the image was a little bit bigger in size from our render, but it just wasn't scaled to the right size. So this node will fix that. And uh, yeah, I'm really liking how this is looking. It might be a little bit strong, but all you really have to do to change the strength of this effect is change the factor of our screen node here. So uh, you could bring this down, for example, and you're going to get a more subtle effect. Or you could change your black and white matte data that we've created with these series of nodes here and make some areas of the image more darker or brighter, depending on if you want more of the brightness of your image to drive further lens grunge effects. But uh, yeah, probably I'd recommend just using this screen node for the simplest option and changing the factor there. Another cool thing we could do if we were uh, taking this grungy lens effect to another level is uh, perhaps add some lens distortion. So I go ahead and press shift A, add a distort lens distortion distortion node here, add it right here. And I believe I can select the fit option. So all of our image fits into our render size here. And then I'll just increase our distortion a little bit, maybe to, let's try 0.4 to start. Ooh, 
It's a little much, I think. Maybe bring it down a bit. Could also bring up the dispersion a bit as well. Try 0.2, but just kind of play around with this lens distortion node. Something like this is kind of interesting, but uh, as you can see, it's only distorting our lens grunge. So if we want to take this even further, we could of course just duplicate our lens distortion node here. So I'll go ahead and press Shift D, duplicate this. So our entire image is going to have that lens distortion applied to it. And let's see what we get. And that's obviously quite a bit here. So maybe bring the distortion down a bit, 0 0.01 maybe. That's a little more subtle. As you can see here, we're getting kind of this uh, chromatic aberration look, like the uh, lens is uh, not very high quality. And uh, yeah, this can be a cool effect to give a little bit of a grungy look to your final renders. Of course, this is all depending on your stylistic choices, but I definitely think having the light drive that lens grunge is a pretty commonly used effect that can take your renders to the next level. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content like this, and I will see you in the next video.